Hey guys, what is up? It's Berlin. Welcome back to my channel. Now, before I start this video, I am going to issue a big old trigger warning. This video will contain topics like suicide attempt and self-harm, all of this kind of stuff. So if these things are triggering for you, then this is really, really not the video for you to sit and watch. So please click away, watch another one, go and watch someone else, do something else. With that said, I am gonna get started on this video because tonight on Twitter, Chris Avery Bennett, who you might know, you've probably heard me mention before, if you've watched any of my previous videos on this topic, I have mentioned Chris Avery Bennett in pretty much every one of these videos that I've done. Chris Avery Bennett is somebody who had a bad experience with Jeffree Star when she was younger, when she was 15. So this video is going to be me sharing her story. She put it out on Twitter. I asked her if I could use it in a video and she gave me consent to use it. We have been DMing back and forth for a couple of weeks anyway. So we've kind of, I feel like a little bit bonded over like similar kind of teenage experiences and things. So what I really wanted to do tonight in this video was to come share her experience, let people hear her voice, let people hear what she has to say. Because, you know, so far in this whole thing, we've seen an NDA, we've seen a check, we've not really heard too much from the survivors you know what we've heard is that they've allegedly retracted their statements and that's it but now chris has come out on twitter spoken and it's quite a lot so i'm going to share these clips with you and then we'll come back and chat about it afterwards when i was 15 years old i snuck onto myspace and accidentally created a um, an equality blog called Make a Difference. Instantly, I was kind of thrown into this whole MySpace culture as a teenager. I had no idea what I was doing, and I actually had the opportunity to work with some really amazing people, such as Jackie Beat, Austin Young, Plastic Martyr, and many more. Unfortunately, that is also how I met Jeffree Star. And things started to change very rapidly. It went from being this blogger. One day I was standing in my kitchen. I, it was probably like, I don't know, like maybe 9.30 at night Eastern time. And I received an email. And it was kind of gross <laughs> um definitely unsolicited and it was the first time that i had ever really received something unsolicited like that and i didn't really know what to do with it because i was 15 i had absolutely no idea what the hell was going on i had some 20 something year old emailing me a provocative photo and this person was also the most powerful and influential person that I had known at that point. So honestly, I did what most teenagers do when they don't know what to do, which is nothing. So I ignored it. A couple weeks later, I had publicly asked Jeffrey if he wanted to take a part in the Make a Difference Project, which really was the simplest thing he could have ever done. It literally like the only thing i required from him was one sentence that was meant to create a better message for the world and that followed with my blog's motto make a difference be the difference which later in my life i ended up kind of rewriting into don't just make a difference become the difference that you want to see. Pre replied much faster than he has ever replied to me before. And honestly, before I even read what he said, I was assuming that it was going to be for make a difference and that it was going to be something great and inspirational from this person that I had connected with online that was 
somebody who had like all of this influence and it was really exciting to me because I felt like that this could have really made a huge impact on kind of bettering this world just a little bit. Unfortunately, what he said was an insult and not just an insult, but a personal attack. And it incited others to kind of follow along with him as he sat there and watched everything happen from afar. And next thing you know, I had hundreds upon thousands of people contacting me, telling me to kill myself, telling me how disgusting and ugly and just gross that I was. And I was 15. That hit me so hard. It it really deeply personally affected me. And so I ended up realizing that at that point, my peace project had become something that it wasn't supposed to be. And it was beginning to be centered around hate from Jeffree Star fans. So I deleted everything. I deleted it all. And that's where shit gets dark. I ended up being transported to the emergency room via ambulance. And it was because I tried to kill myself. I tried to hang myself and it didn't work because I kind of fell right out of the noose that I made with the tie that I had from, um, from church. <laughs> and, and then I sliced myself silly. And <laughs> within like 40 minutes, I was in an observation room in a hospital being bandaged and wrapped up because I had I had several hundred marks on my body that I had put there myself. I then was transferred to a long-term facility where I received more intimate treatment because the emergency room had never seen anybody do something like that to themselves. I remember the doctor himself wrapped me up and looked at me and said he had never seen so much. I remained in inpatient treatment for over a month. I was 15. Fast forward for just about a decade and I am in my bedroom as an adult. And I'm on the phone with someone named Kat who had reached out to me and I'm telling this person a very detailed version of this story that I haven't told in a very long time. And it was the most terrifying thing that I had ever done because I knew after telling her this, everything was going public. And then... One morning, I'm sitting out in my back porch, and I had a message request, and it was from somebody called Gage Arthur. I had no idea who the fuck this was. So I texted Kat because the message had information that, to my knowledge, only Kat was aware of. And come to figure, it was an attempt to where Jeffree Star was trying to pay me $10,000 to tell me to shut the fuck up. I laughed it off. A few days later, the article came out. And then fast forward just over a month. And here we are now. And still no reply. I don't know if I really wanted a reply from him but I expected something. I didn't expect for 
this entire situation to be completely ignored. And that kind of hit me. It is so important that this conversation keeps going because this is a person who uses their influence on the internet via their social media to prey upon people. And some of those people are children and that's not acceptable. And that cannot happen again. And that is why I am speaking. Talking about this, make your YouTube videos, make your tweets and Instagram posts and Facebook posts and make this conversation happen. This cannot happen again. Okay, so you can see from all these clips here that Chris Avery Bennett is clearly kind of looking for some kind of closure from Jeffree Star about this whole sexual assault allegation situation. Honestly, I don't think she's gonna get it because Jeffree Star has ignored this whole entire situation this far. So to me, why is Jeffree gonna come out now and say something about it? I mean, if you go by what happened when these allegations came out, when this second article came out from Insider, Business Insider put out this second article, I think it was two days ago now. What did Jeffree Star do? Oh, got on the private jet, went to Wyoming, and went to a shooting range, bup, 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 shooting guns. And he also went on a radio interview. On this radio interview, Jeffree Star was talking about how he donated to this charity that the radio station were talking about. He donated $25,000 to, you know, helping disadvantaged families over Christmas, which is wonderful, of course, but he also promoted his new skincare line that's coming out next year. So, Essentially, it was like Jeffree Star just spent 25 grand to sit there on this interview that was put up on YouTube and promote his skincare line that was coming out next year. Yeah, you can tell by my face what I think of that, can't you? I mean... You know, yeah, fine, of course, you're a businessman, you want to sell your products, fine. But when you're literally being accused of sexual assault and you just completely brush it aside, completely ignore it, that is problematic beyond belief for me. That is a no-go. So I'm going to play you this little clip of Jeffree Star on this radio interview. I think it was yesterday. So I'm gonna pop this in here and you can take a look for yourself at him sitting there promoting his skincare. So next year we're launching Jeffree Star Skincare. Finally, it's time. Um, so for those dry winters, get ready to have some of the best products. Um, it's all really clean ingredients, nothing you know weird or crazy. I've mm -hmm. been using skincare since I was 12 and I'm maybe a little expert at it. So right. and there's also a lot of new makeup products coming. Um, we have first ever mascara coming out and a lot of stuff. So I'm excited to balance my Wyoming life with California. <laughs> awesome. Well, once again, I want to thank you for coming out. And again, big props for that big donation. And of course, we're glad to have you yes, here sir. in Casper. Thank you. Jeffree Star, folks. Mwah. So there you had Jeffree Star doing what he always, always does. Whenever he's in a scandal, whenever he is in trouble, oh, look, I'll give out some money. Just like the other day when it was, oh, I'll do a cash up giveaway. Every time the man is in trouble, he is there giving out money to try and make himself seem like a good person because he loves giving back so much. When is he going to realise that giving out money doesn't absolve you of all these horrible things that you're supposed to have done? Giving out money is not fixing the problem. And I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth, but I think what people like Chris Avery Bennett are looking for here is a public apology. He bullied Chris Avery Bennett publicly and in private, going by what Chris Avery Bennett has just said. But Chris Avery Bennett was attacked publicly 
by a load of Jeffree Star fans, leading her down that very dark path and all of that. So, some kind of public apology from Jeffree Star might go some way to giving Chris some kind of closure, I don't know. But honestly, I think that's what people are looking for. I think people are looking for Jeffree Star to take accountability, to publicly acknowledge these accusations and to publicly sit down and talk about it in a YouTube video or something because honestly now <laughs> if you buy his makeup you're basically saying you don't give a fuck about sexual assault victims you are basically saying oh well pfft, fuck you then honestly that's what it looks like who wants to buy makeup from somebody who has paid off sexual assault victims. I don't, and I won't be, I won't be buying skincare, makeup, nothing that he comes out with now. Not after all this, mm -mm, no way. But it's honestly very sad that he, as a 35 year old man, can't just even acknowledge this, can't acknowledge Chris Avery Bennett, who is kind of screaming out for him to take accountability. Whether he does it in private to Chris or whether he does it in public, I think he needs to do it because how can you just leave someone after they've been through all that because of bullying that you started? Jeffree Star started that bullying with her by all of his fans attacking her and everything and, you know, forcing her into a corner, making her feel like she had no other option than to try and end her own life. Really? And Jeffree Star's just gonna pff, ignore that. Shows you what he thinks about humans, doesn't it? Is it just me or is that really, really, really cold. He's clearly not a nice person at all. He's clearly very messed up and honestly, I'm glad that I've made the decision to stop purchasing anything from his brand. Honestly, I can't believe all the stuff that's come out over the last few days, really. But Chris Avery Bennett's story was one that actually touched me because of going through kind of similar experiences in my teen years. I felt that I could empathise with her and I felt that I wanted to put her story across. And we had a little bit of a conversation today and Chris actually said to me something which I thought was really, really sad she said, oh, you know, I didn't realise that people would care about the victims. And I thought, that's really, really sad to hear. You know, of course, people care. Of course they do. I found that really, really upsetting and really sad that she'd say that because I thought, you know, yeah, sure, there are going to be people who come on YouTube and make videos about this for money. I don't make any money off YouTube, you know, that's not why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I want to share Chris's story today. You know, YouTube is not my source of income. I have a retail job. Or had, before Covid took it away. But YouTube is not my source of income. I don't make money from YouTube. I do class myself as a drama channel. I make drama videos, but I don't make money from YouTube. So for me, sharing this story is purely because I felt kind of connected to Chris in her experiences in life, you know, talking about mental health, self-harm, all of these things, I felt connected. So I just wanted to share her story and that was the main point of me making this video, but also to say, hey, look at what Jeffree Star's doing. Oh, look, promoting more products. Go figure. 
Anyway, guys, I'm going to stop this little video here. Of course, it hasn't been much of me talking, but that's because, you know, Chris had a lot to say and really I just wanted to kind of give this video to her. So I'm going to leave this one here. I'm going to say take care, stay safe, stay well. Thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far and I'll see you on my next one. Bye, guys.